Alright, today we'll be talking about DOSBox. Is there a certain part of the tutorial that you want to watch? If so, just scroll down and click Show More. To put it most simply, DOSBox is a box or window inside which you can run DOS programs. It's like having a DOS computer, one of those old computers, inside of your computer. It runs on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even some Android devices. The first question the average person has is, why the hell would I want to run this thing? And that's a valid question. Your two worlds will be crushed. Britannia first, then Earth. Many of the games we play today have their basis in DOS. Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Command and Conquer, most of the Star Wars games all had their roots in DOS. What does that mean? The earliest games in those series don't actually work on Windows, Mac, or Linux, but they will through the use of DOSBox. That's what it's for. It's a DOS emulator, and it will let us play the games that started it all. The purpose of this tutorial is to help you get, install, and set up DOSBox for use in DOS games. Keep in mind that the installation procedure for each DOS game will be different. DOSBox is 100% free for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Simply go to DOSBox.com. Scroll to the very top of the page. We'll see Downloads as a link. Then simply click on the version you want. The Windows version is the most common that people grab. But if you have Mac OS, for example, you want to grab this one, and Linux is based on your distribution. At the time of recording this, DOSBox Turbo, which is the mobile app version of DOSBox for the Android, is available on the Google Play Store for $349. The emulator is fully network capable and includes virtual keypad support. The installer for Windows is going to look something like this. Go ahead and click Next after which it's going to ask you core files and desktop shortcut. Your desktop shortcut is optional, core files is not. Go ahead and click next. And now it's going to ask you where you want the program installed. Not a big deal. Install it to wherever you want. However, it should be an easily accessible location because we're going to be doing some work in the files in just a moment. Go ahead and launch the program to make sure it works. If it doesn't work, you'll want to contact DOSBox or try to figure out what went wrong with the installation. However, this window should come up. Go ahead and type EXIT to close the program. Go ahead and open up the DOSBox folder where you installed it to. It should look something like this. Do yourself a favor and go ahead and either open your start menu or your start screen. Now in the very bottom of the start menu, there should be a little uh, search box or in the case of Windows 8, the start screen, you can go ahead and type in file extensions and you should find an option to show or hide file extensions this will save you a lot of trouble later on with uh, working with files in Windows go ahead and uncheck the box that says hide extensions for known file types and to save yourself even more trouble later on go ahead and show hidden files hit OK and now all the files have extensions on the end of them for example this is a bat file or batch file. It basically runs a bunch of commands when you click it. It's otherwise a text file. Let's go ahead and double click on the options batch file right now. And it's actually going to open up a notepad uh, window. And the interesting thing about this notepad window, if we go to the save dialog, it's actually hidden inside a secret folder called app data and it's all hidden from the common user who doesn't have hidden files selected but here in the app data folder you're going to be able to edit your DOSBox configuration all right, any line in this config file that has a number sign in front of it is commented what a comment does is it basically means that this line is not run in the actual configuration so 
the comments are used to give you information about the different fields and the actual fields are being executed down here so for example full screen it says whether it's gonna start in full screen or not and you can hit alt enter whenever you want to switch between the two it's false meaning that it will not start in full screen it'll be in windowed mode window resolution you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set this to something that you feel comfortable with you can go to the display resolution wikipedia page for a good list of uh, resolutions based on monitor sizes i like to keep mine personally about uh, two-thirds of the screen i don't like to have it full screen because i like to be able to mess around with windows and whatnot in the background while still running my dos programs now as for output output defaults to surface or software mode basically uh your computer handles all the rendering through the operating system which isn't the ideal way to do things we generally want to run our graphics through a graphics processing chip so in order to accomplish that windows default is to use direct draw an alternative is also OpenGL. either OpenGL or direct draw should work now then at the very bottom of the configuration you're going to see an auto exec what this is is auto execute so whatever commands you put in here are automatically going to be run by DOSBox the moment it's booted up. One thing Windows typically screws up is this save as type. You're going to have to be very careful every time you save the DOSBox config file to change that from text box down to all files. And when you do that, it's actually going to make the DOSBox configuration file appear there and you can overwrite it. But until you do that, it's not going to save it as a text copy and not the actual configuration file. Now, after you do that, you're going to want to take the .txt and delete that and make it DOSBox config again. It's going to ask if you want to overwrite it. Go ahead and do that. That's going to change everything up. If you screw up the DOSBox config file to where you can't use it anymore, do a complete uninstallation and run it from scratch. Alright, so once DOSBox is running, this is the command prompt, the operating system for DOS basically. There was no graphical user interface, everything was done through text. So I'm going to go ahead and put up a reference guide on my website. That's bit.ly forward slash db tut1. And trust me when I say you're going to want to look at that reference guide because there are so many commands in DOS. It's just, it's kind of crazy. But I'm going to go over some of the basic ones that you're going to need right now. The first command to look at, so the first command to really look at is mount. That's M-O-U-N-T. What mount does is it is a function of DOS box, not of actual DOS. It's going to create virtual drives for you to be able to do stuff without actually messing up your real drive because Windows doesn't give DOS full permission. It's playing in a little sandbox that is your window. So in this case, I'm pulling up information from my Elder Scrolls 1 Daggerfall tutorial. So I'm going to mount the C drive, that is C as C drive ES1A. What this means is, is that I'm creating a virtual drive of C. So in, in DOS, C is going to be represented by the physical location of your computer, your Windows computer, of C drive ES1A. So when I go to C drive and to change drives, you simply put in whatever the drive number is and colon. Okay, so C colon is going to change the drive. Now that we're in the drive, we're going to show you how to list a directory contents. And they're not called folders, they're called directories. So we type dir, and that's going to list everything that's in the directory. Now because it's the arena installation for the game, you actually just see the arena folder inside. So how you get from one folder to another is the change directory command. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to type cd, that's change directory, and space arena which is the folder we want to go to now cd can be done several ways if you want to go back to your previous folder just go cd space dot dot 
One dot is your current folder. Watch, one dot goes nowhere. You stay in the current directory. Two dots goes up a level. So, back on the C drive, we're going to go back into Arena. Just by CD Arena. Now we're going to do a directory listing here. And the directory has 168 files in it. It's too big to list. So what we do is we use a command arg. How this is done is we type dir, and then we put forward slash. And what the forward slash is, is this is a, um, it's an attachment onto the previous command. So what we're attaching to it is w, meaning wide, okay? So this is the wide view of the directory listing. So it's going to, it tries to list everything in, in multiple columns. You still can't see everything. We're going to use another attachment to it. We're going to type dir forward slash w forward slash p. What p is is pause. So it lists everything it can list, and then it pauses for you to hit any key. Now, there were some jokes about where's the any key. Well, just hit enter. Bam. It just displayed the rest from that point, that press any key to continue point. So now you've seen every file listed here. Now, obviously, running a program in the directory is very simple. Uh, if you want to search for a very specific file, searching in DOS is pretty simple. All we have to do is type dir, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the wildcard button. The wildcard button is the star key followed by a period, followed by exe. What this means is it's going to look for any executable files. Executables are like programs. Now we've displayed all the executables inside of the arena directory. In this case, we're going to run a.exe. You can just type programs by their name while you're in the directory they're located in. You notice that a.exe having been run, runs the game, Elder Scrolls, the arena. Now, other than that, there really isn't too much to getting programs to start. Installation techniques are different, but actually getting them to run is very simple. Other commands to know about. CLS is clear screen. If you got a lot of clutter, you want to start over for a nice presentation, use CLS. So we've covered how to mount drives, change drives, change directories, execute searches, and more. Now, as I mentioned, each game that you want to install and run will require very different procedures on how to get it done. Some of them, you'll just run an installation program. Others, you'll have to use a virtual CD-ROM drive. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain the virtual CD-ROM drive really quick with my Daggerfall setup. Now, to unmount a drive, it's very simple. Just type mount dash u that's basically undo and then the drive letter you want it has removed the drive and now it's defaulted back to the z drive which is nothing now the next step we're going to do is mounting free size what happens is when we try to mount a newer drive for use in a very old old program sometimes those old programs can't handle a very large drive the programs will get confused and think that that drive has rolled over into negative numbers or some really stupid shit has gone on to where the drive doesn't have enough space to actually play the game. So how we fix this is we set an artificial free size for the drive. How this is done is we type mount C, C drive, ES2D. So basically what I'm doing is I'm mounting the C drive to Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. It's very similar to what I did before, but then we're going to hit space again, and we're going to type free size 1000. What this means is that it's going to have 1000 kilobytes free. This is necessary only in those situations that I basically just described, where the program can't analyze the size of a very large drive. It needs a reasonable number for that era. And in this case, 1000 kilobytes is reasonable. So we're going to go ahead and mount the drive as is. It's mounted just like it would have been normally, except now it has that little bit of information ready. The next thing everyone gets hung up on is the CD-ROM drive. 
So when we mount a CD-ROM drive, it has to be done exactly as per that game specifications because that program is looking not only to see that the CD-ROM drive exists, but that the label on the disc is in fact the label they're looking for. Just an example off the top of my head. Say you had Daggerfall and you had Diablo 1. So you can't interchange the discs. They won't work with each other. The program will kick it out and say, no, that's wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to mount it properly. What you do is you mount D drive, C drive, ES2D, and then DFCD. This is the Daggerfall CD-ROM drive directory, basically. But as far as DOSBox is going to know, the D drive is that directory. They're one and the same. But right now it's just a normal directory. It isn't actually a CD-ROM. So how we fix that is we put dash T, which is type. And then it's going to look for the next thing to figure out what type of drive it is. In this case, it's a CD-ROM drive. Now, leaving it just like this will, will not work. And the reason is because the game is looking for that very specific label. So we're going to go ahead and label it. Dash L-A-B-E-L -E Daggerfall. Now, keep in mind, the game is going to look for uppercase and lowercase. It's going to make sure everything is perfect. If your spelling is off, then it's not going to work. It is very specific. So now it is mounted. So what's going to happen in this scenario is that the game is going to confirm that the D drive is a CD-ROM drive, and that that CD-ROM drive contains the Daggerfall data and is actually labeled as Daggerfall. In order to properly run and execute these programs. But in order to make these programs work properly, you have to understand what you're doing when you type C colon. That's, you're, you're basically going to the C drive, okay? So when you're doing dir, that's a directory listing. So now you know that that's how you view the directory. Well, there's nothing in here except a PDF file for the game and two other directories. So what are we doing? We're gonna change directory into dagger. That is the Daggerfall directory. And now we're going to do another directory listing. And once again, we're hit by the same problem. There are 26 files and not enough lines. So we're going to do a directory listing, forward slash W. And now we can see all the files. Now because this is a lot to take in, a lot of people have trouble uh, seeing things that aren't pre-sorted. So we're going to type dir star period exe. These are the executable files. In this case, the executable for the game is Dagger. Now, once again, keep in mind, the game will not run unless it's been properly installed, as per my tutorial video. However, the purpose of this was so that you can understand what the commands actually do. You're not just following a list of predefined commands. I hope this tutorial has helped you install and set up DOSBox. My new kitten Oliver is about to kill me with his vicious, vicious teeth, as you can see. So, you all have a good one now.